The Super Nintendo is my favorite console. There are so many good games for it. In fact, I'm still discovering amazing games 30 years after its release. But just like any other console, the Super Nintendo had its fair share of bad games. One thing I find kind of weird is that the bad games for the Super Nintendo are worse than bad games on the NES. You'd think that bad games on a less powerful system would be worse, but no, at least not in my opinion. I'm sure most of us have seen videos on YouTube regarding the worst Super Nintendo games. These videos never forget to include games like Bebe's Kids, Pit Fighter, Space Ace, Balls 3D, Race Driving, and Rap Jam Volume 1. However, in today's video, I want to showcase other terrible Super Nintendo games that you might not know are bad. What is going on everyone, Ron Man here as always, and today we're taking a look at some Super Nintendo hidden turds. Also, if you're new here and you like my content, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons, as well as that bell notification so you stay up to date with Ron Man Gaming. Let's start the list off with Dennis the Menace. This game is based on the 1993 film. This is an action platformer that doesn't do anything right, although one could argue that the graphics are not half bad. The music is poo and so are the controls. The first level is Mr. Wilson's house. There are no in-game instructions as to what to do, although it becomes apparent that your goal is more than just to get to the end of the stage. It turns out you have to collect the large coins before heading to the end of the level. This is one of those action platformers where the levels are big and there's no clear direction, kind of like Wayne's World or Dr. Franken. Enemies appear to have been placed randomly, and it's hard to tell what you can jump on. Fun fact, I attempted to review this game on my channel during my first year on YouTube, but the game was so insufferable that I quickly shelved it and moved on to another game. Also, one dead giveaway that a game sucks is if it was published by Ocean. Speaking of games published by Ocean, coming in at number 2 is The Flintstones, which is based on the 1994 film. The Flintstones is an action platformer where you play as Fred. The objective here is to make it to the end of each stage, unlike Dennis the Menace where you need to collect something first. With the only goal being to get to the end of the stage, you'd think that having shorter and more concise stages would have been their design choice. But nope, these levels are huge and you die after only 3 hits. If you die, you go back to the beginning of the stage, which is really annoying. There are no checkpoints. The Flintstones is a very hard game, made even harder because the controls are some of the worst. I did cover this game in a separate review, so if you're interested, check it out. Next, we have Lethal Weapon, which is another movie licensed game published by Ocean. I promise that not every game on the list is published by Ocean. Lethal Weapon is an action platformer. The first time I played this, I was taken aback by how awful the graphics are. The controls here can feel floaty, especially when jumping and platforming. The level design is also pretty frustrating. In this stage here, if you fall, you'll have to slowly climb your way back up. The music is also pretty mediocre. The nicest thing I can say about this game is that it's the best Ocean published game on this list. The Tick is one of the worst beat-em-ups I have ever played. By nature, beat-em-ups are a repetitive genre. That's why it's important that they're done exceptionally well. To me, the most important aspect of a beat-em-up is the combat tech. The fighting needs to be fun and easy to grasp for beginners, but also deep enough for hardcore gamers to really sink their teeth into. It's also important that games in this genre are to be well-paced and have varied and interesting environments. The Tick, on the other hand, drops the ball on all of these aspects. The combat tech is paper thin. You can punch, kick, jump, and grab enemies, although it's really not exciting. The levels are even more dull than the combat. The game starts off on a moving bus. You just have to defeat all the enemies to beat the stage. These enemies, though, it feels like they're never ending. Anyway, after you beat this stage, you're then taken to a stage where you have to hop across rooftops. Weapons are thrown at you from all sides of the screen, and it feels impossible to dodge them all. The next level has you, again, fighting what feels like another endless onslaught of enemies. I I mean, this just drags on and on. Also, these levels look like crap. Why is there so much blue?
And the final game featured in this video is Power Pigs of the Dark Age. Power Pigs is an action platformer with a generic medieval setting. It's poorly paced with five long stages. I am not a fan of the graphics, or I guess more accurately, the art style. This is one of those games where the camera slightly shifts depending on which direction you're looking. So if you're moving around a lot, the camera will feel kind of slippery. The enemies are poorly placed, sometimes hitting you from off screen, or sometimes they appear so quick that it's impossible to avoid taking damage on your first time. The controls don't feel too bad at first. You can jump, swing your sword, and do butt stomps. You can also throw things. But when you're actually running through the stages, these controls do feel pretty slippery. Overall, Power Pigs is just not a fun experience. And that about wraps up my list. Keep in mind, these are not the worst games on the Super Nintendo, but rather just a bunch of crappy games that you might not have known about. In other words, they're hidden turds. Why don't you tell me down in the comments about some other crappy Super Nintendo games that other people might not know about. I have plans to do a part two in this series, so stay tuned and I'll see you guys in the next video.